You're listening to End of the Real. Oh my god! We're pew pew in a galaxy far, far away. We come to you with Star Trek. Yeah. Galaxy's far, far away. Jared, that's the wrong. Oh, that, that's no. the wrong idea right there. All right. So that Star Wars jokes out of the way. Uh, we watched Star Trek Were episode five. Were they meant to be five. jokes? Yeah, I don't know. It was just a lame reference. Star Trek five, Final Frontier. Okay, so I'm your host, Jared. Co-host Ethan. Hi. Let's get into it. So uh, we're, we're both kind of into Star Trek. So, yeah, but I don't also think you. you've, you've seen never, a lot more. You've never seen the original series, That's which I have. I've seen. I haven't seen many of the movies. I, I've seen most of TNG, and I've seen how far through are we with Deep Space Nine? We're like uh, we're like more than halfway through Deep Space Nine. So I'd say I've seen most of Deep Space Nine. What else have I seen? I've seen some. You've of the seen new a couple movies. of the movies. Yeah, yeah. I didn't like them. Well, no, nah, actually, I don't. I don't like them. Yeah. I don't mind I don't, most of these. I, I'm going to say I don't hate them. This is the worst thing I've seen with the original crew. Yeah. I haven't seen uh, Sussex Generations, which is apparently really bad, but this is... Apparently, this movie almost killed the franchise. It's yeah, that bad. Because it's just old guys... It is boring. ...doing, like, country stuff. It's not Star Trek, you know, because I, I'm cool with slow, you know? That's what I'm trying to say when I'm saying it's all guys talking to each other, doing country stuff. They're not actually doing Star Trek stuff, country, like, slow stuff, or, like, investigating and doing things. They're cooking baked beans and talking about how they fart. Yeah, not for a little bit, but for, like, 20 minutes of the movie is no. watching three guys it sit a, around It was more beans. than 20. It, Remember, we stopped yeah. it, I think it was 40 minutes in. It's a two-hour film. Dude. It, was, it feels I think like it, was, it goes on forever. So I made him stop it to check the time. I think it was 45 minutes in. Yeah. It takes us to get onto the ship. And the ship is falling apart. <gasps> oh, okay. So it's the original crew, actually. Yeah, Could yeah. Maybe I, apparently, there were up? problems in making the movie that gets used as excuses. But I, I'm going to say there's, it's just a bad movie. Apparently, th- there was a writer's strike on. They didn't get the money they wanted for the effects. Like, there was meant to be, like actual angels and demons battling at the end but no that wouldn't have done it uh, it was it wouldn't be enough to save this thing no the the the, the problem with the movie is the main direction of the story that we follow what story is, there's yeah. no story it's just how great kirk is and the rest of the crew are like secondary characters well basically there's like well, four, like four stories characters. there's four or five different stories four or five four i think there's four so one of them is spock finding his brother oh, yeah like we're just going to I'm just gonna say all the story. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Quick. Spock's brother, who we've never heard half of brother, before, sorry. who's never half brother, who's never turned up before, never been mentioned. So he turns up. He's he turns one up. Story. Yeah. What's, well, what's he wants brother? to steal a ship to go to the center of the galaxy. Right. So what's the other stories? And then we've got the story. Well, that's basically of... it. Like that's the whole thing. It's incredibly undeveloped. Oh no, I meant like the sort of like ways this movie could have gone because he stakes and holds people hostage so they're like that's a big thing it's the hostage thing um and then the other thing is that there's this like thing in the center of the universe which they think is the actual some, devil thing. well they think it's they think it's actually god well at first uh yeah so cyborg who is spock's half brother has been receiving i think some sort of messages in his brain because he's got a special type of telepathy oh, or man. empathy or whatever. We get introduced and to him. he believes that God is trapped in the center of the universe, and if they travel there, he'll help to heal the galaxy. So, of course, when we find him traveling to the center of the universe, which, by the way, this is Star Trek, where there are starships. Right, there are starships everywhere. Harry Mudd manages to get hold of multiple starships, but Spock's brother, Cyborg who has the power to get people to do anything he wants. Yep. To, like, like He talks to these people for a couple of minutes and they were willing to die for him. And he can't find himself a spaceship. It is an outrage. And, it's and, an outrage. And to find one, he travels to... Outrage. He Sorry, travels to the planet... Um, what's the planet called? Paradise? Oh my goodness. Plat- no, Paradise of Peace. Was it the peace? It's planet? the planet of peace. The planet of peace. I can't remember peace. what it's actually called. This is the dumbest. We get introduced to it. It is the Mad Max ripoff planet. There, there's something. There's something. I don't know if this movie is trying to tell us something about the Federation and like the future, but it's like, it seems like the Federation is collapsing. I don't know nah, what's happening. It's poorly or run. it's it's incredibly badly run. Well, like, was this a warning about big government or something? 
Because it's like, okay, the planet of peace, which was a diplomatic thing set up by the three big governments. You got the Federation, the Klingons, and Romulans. Yeah. They've come together to make a peaceful planet I guess? where people coexist. That doesn't make any sense. And there are peaceful planets already in the Federation. To do well, I think this is to start from scratch. Because to do it, they've picked a shithole planet no one lived on. Right. And just dumped settlers there. And then they they talk about how they con settlers into travelling yeah. there. And it seems like they're just all like ex cons and shit. Can you tell me also what they gain for like, what did those diplomats or the diplomats politicians who what did they gain? The diplomats hang around in yeah. what is the capital city of the planet of peace, which is a run down Mad Max settlement. It doesn't make any sense because if you know like they any of those three empires, let's yeah. call them, right? Just by themselves, like that, just normal places would be better than this. So, what did the diplomats have? What did the diplomats? Are we go? Let's just call them diplomats. I well, think it what was, did they it have was to just, gain? Well, it's it, what did they it. have to gain? It's a giant government boondoggle. No, but they have to stay there. They're the ones gaining from it. Okay. Yeah. But they're stuck. Ah, uh, okay. So, who are the three diplomats? You got a uh, Federation dude who yeah. is like a sir something. He's like some old, like noble dude. Right. He's like he's like a. Uh, He's like the guy out of uh, you know Babylon Five. Yeah, I think he's you know from the actor. Empire. Yeah, oh, he's a good actor. Yeah, he turns up it. in a couple of things, but it's like yeah, he's like this uh, old privileged class of guy who's just been made diplomat and he's been sent here for some reason. And then you have an ex Klingon general. Yeah, he's been he's disgraced for some reason, so he's been sent here, and then just a hot Romulan. It doesn't make any sense. It doesn't make any sense in the in the whole. Star Trek universe, like it's a giant government boondoggle, right? I'm guessing the Federation has dumped billions of whatever they use as currency into this. Now we should have really put a disclaimer at the start. If you don't watch Star Trek, most of this, what we're going to talk about, is not going to make sense. I've watched I, Star Trek, and most of this doesn't make. I know, sense. but like all the references, it. there's I'm, like, okay, so okay, but like you know the neutral zone, right? Right. Was Between, it in the neutral zone? No, no, no. That's that's what I want to get to. So this peaceful planet. Is right. it in a neutral zone, right? We so, don't know where it is. Right. But it's it's controlled by three governments. Right. There's nothing to control. It is Mad Max people. But that's that's this they've, is they've run around sense. they've made their they weren't allowed weapons, so they've made pipe guns and shit. But you know when they find like you know in uh in uh the neutral zone in the what's it called, the one we're watching? In Deep Space Nine. Okay. In the uh, zone. Yeah, the uh the marquee. The area with the marquee right. between Cardassia and okay. Federation, yeah. I understand why the marquee who have broken off from the Federation are all pissed and all off because they were on the wrong yeah, side. Yeah, but I understand why side, they so. have, like, they might live on a planet that's shitty. Yeah. Or they might live dangerously, right? Right. I do not understand why a Federation, Klingon, and Romblin run planet is there are complete people- shit. Like fighting over watering holes in the desert. It makes no sense. It the whole thing. Okay, yeah, but that's it. The whole thing is like this: the Federation in the future is this hugely poorly run failure. Like, look at the ships, right? Uh, at the start of the movie, the the Enterprise crew are on Earth at Yosemite National Park, doing their whole sitting around eating beans oh, wait, and farting jokes. Can we do the shout jokes. out? Wait one second, though. What? Uh, the climbing scene. So oh, yeah, you, you told me this. about this. Yeah, yeah. I, I found this out. I was watching a YouTube video on, like, the most legit climbing scenes in movies. Turns out the climbing scene, which admittedly does go for too long. I think it's 10 minutes long of us cutting between someone climbing on the side of the mountain. Uh, it's a legit climb. And then climber. Uh, Bones, like, going, you stupid asshole. Yeah. But it's, Put, it's, take it in. Bones it's a has the, Bones climber, has the one, like, best scene in the movie, oh, yeah, by the but, way. But anyway, the legitimate climber actually doing those scenes so apparently it's one of the best like when you watch it it's impressive that is impressive that's dangerous because he, there, is, there impressive. is a guy actually free climbing up the side of the cliff yeah it's really cool um it does go for 10 minutes which is way too long for this movie. and then it finally cuts to it being like a 60 year old shatner yeah and it's like <laughs> yeah that's that's not the guy we saw right before <laughs> And then Spock flying up on the boots saying, you've got to concentrate. Don't look at the rocket boots. Yeah, Just Spock, concentrate. That's what I That's why I wrote down. Spock tried to kill him. Everyone's incompetent except for Kirk. Uh, well, 
I just can't get over the fact. But anyway, no, I can't get over the planet, man. But okay, okay. But planet. that's the thing. Like the whole Federation is collapsed. They're all at Earth. Okay. Something happens on the peace planet. Yeah. And the only people Starfleet can send are way back at Earth. Like no, there's no ships. No there's ship. no ships except for these guys who are on leave. And when they get up to their ship, the whole thing's falling apart. It's brand new, but they've been it working on it for like three weeks and that nothing on it works. There's wires hanging out of the they're, wall. They're literally... They've got a skeleton crew, so people are running between it. Okay. And Why would you send a skeleton? Like, wouldn't you send like... Because I like, I know, yes, it's Star Trek. So I, what I'm going to say, wouldn't you send like soldiers or, or fighting crew? That doesn't quite make sense. But it's like... Come on. Why There's would you no send... time. There's no one else who's competent in the whole of the Federation. Why would you send a ship that's in desperate need of repair with a skeleton crew to take on a huge hostage situation with an army? I mean, I guess they could just torpedo and blow up the entire I think planet, it's but I th- why I would just they do that? It's a, the rest of the Federation is so incompetent and just don't care. Yeah. And they've got one like actual crew that does anything. It's just stupid. The whole the whole thing makes no you, sense. Well, you know the skeleton it's just about crew things. how great Kirk is. Uh. The whole movie is how great Kirk is. He's the one who stands up to Cybok. He's the one who stands up to God. Well, Literally devil, stands up to God. Well, he thinks God. it's God at first. Yeah, you're right. He stands up to God. You're right. What does God need with a starship? Fucking the one weird Kirk good is so line. lame in this movie. Yeah, he's so fucking lame you haven't even seen the original uh, the original series where he's yeah. actually really great even just watch wrath of khan the difference between these two movies is ridiculous well anyway so what happens is we get on that evil planet peace planet and he and okay he how rides does... up to a dude who yeah. what does the dude do what does the dude do ethan Oh, he's dancing around like a fucking monkey. What is he? Do- what what do- is he doing? What he's does like he do? A- he's in the desert, and what does he do? He's he's digging holes. He digs holes in the desert. What for? I think it's water. Is it? Because the guy comes up and he's like, because th- when the guy's coming up, he's gonna shoot him, and he's like, why would you shoot me? And he's like, this is all I have. My holes. My holes. <laughs> and Cybox, it's Cybox. Okay, he's got this weird thing where he like. He feels their greatest pain and then he heals it, and then he instantly just everyone just instantly works for him and wants to help him. Yeah, but they weren't completely. They're not. Like, I don't think they're hypnotized. brainwashed. They're not forced to do it. They want to help him. I think that's it. He compels yeah. them to help that's him. That's why Kirk doesn't get convinced. Cause it Kirk's kind like, of Ooh. reminded me of like the mule from the Foundation series. He's sort of got that power where it's like suddenly people want to help him. Ah, okay. I haven't uh, read that. Uh, like the first three books are okay. Yeah, I didn't like him. Isaac Asimov? Yeah. Yeah, he, he gets a bit weird. So. Uh, but yeah. Okay, so here's the thing. He travels to the Peace Planet, uh-huh. which is a planet that is Mad Max. Right, okay. Where there are no starships. No starships. Okay. That's, oh. that's He takes the three diplomats hostage because he wants them to send him a ship that he can use, right? That is so but stupid. He could have gone to any other planet. How I don't did, even I don't know he how he there? got there. How did he get there? But that's you know the... what happened? Someone teleported him off the ship because he was like, Oh, I'm gonna go send to universe and talk to God and they're like, Oh really? Do do But like... it's like at any point he should have been able to go to any other planet with spaceships, take over because he doesn't. He only needed one ship, right? I bet he was on the way. Whoops. I bet he was on the way, and he uh, he he, was he actually got transported the... to the planet yeah, on yeah. a spaceship he could have taken over. I bet no, just I bet so he could take he over another starship. Oh, and he, he was... just he just didn't. Oh, because, because they're like they're God. Immune... Is there profit with God? No, with God everything is free. Oh, no profit. And the Ferengi are immune like... to telepathy. That would have made sense. Oh shit! Yeah, there you go. Except occasionally in TNG when they're not, but anyway, whatever. The the point is, why the fuck is he on that planet? And why, why the fuck is he on that planet? I don't know. He could have gone to any other planet and just got a starship within a couple of minutes. Like God, that is how annoying. fast his brainwasher thing happens. That's so fucking stupid. Instead, he goes to Mad Max world, creates an army, and he's so against bloodshed. He keeps going. I don't want, I don't want any violence. That's not the way. 
But then he creates an army and takes people hostage. What right? does he think is going to happen? Oh, my God. He's such an idiot. Okay, you know, I'm going to give it a little bit of benefit of doubt. I'm going to say... Is that guy God is talking to him? Because he's like, this has got to be the biggest idiot in the entire galaxy. Yeah, he's the dumbest Vulcan I can find. Yeah. Okay, so I'm going to just throw this out there just as an idea. It just gives a little benefit of doubt. I'm going to say that all... I'm going to say they cut out the scene where they said that the... What's the starship called? The Enterprise? Is it the Enterprise? Which one? Uh, it's like the new Enterprise or something. Oh, sorry. I, can't remember. I, I don't know what it is. Anyway. Uh, because I haven't seen the previous movie. So I, I, don't, I don't know exactly what's happening. I'm going to hypothesize that they originally were going to say that that Enterprise was in a base to get some sort of new cloaking shield or like some sort of new... Special shield. I right? don't think so. Right? I don't think and they were going to say that at all. That is the only reason he did the hostage situation was to attract that one ship. So he needed the special so ship could, yes. because it had a special... Clo- that would because make sense. He needed that would to make get, sense. Because he goes on about the thing with the center of the universe is, right? They've sent in probes and all these Yeah, ships. it's got some sort of barrier around it, yeah, which some, we later find out barrier. is actually keeping the demon in. But, well, no, well, the thing is, though, there's apparently a barrier around getting to the planet. Like, even yeah, to it, yeah, right? Yeah, yeah. So no one's able to get into it or through. But why were they able to get through the barrier? They just go straight through it. Was it nothing? There's literally nothing. Was it some sort of faith thing? I can't remember. We just they said, and we're going through it, and they through it. That is fucking it. Maybe was Cyborg leading them through? I can't remember. Okay, he just goes through it. That's before (sighs) the planet because it's it's a big. I don't know what is this cloud thing? Yeah. So I mean, I'm we're not even going to touch it. on the fact that in other t- uh, in other Star Trek things, it takes them like decades to get from like the Federation to that far into the galaxy without special help. Oh, you my know, God. just ignore that fact completely. They get there in like an hour. They get everywhere in like an hour. Yeah. That's oh, why yeah. It make well, sense. they get to Earth. Well, where what- was this peace planet? Oh, uh, where are the other Federation ships? Where are the Klingon? Okay, there's one Klingon ship. And oh, it, yeah, and I have the, no the, idea the, what the, it's doing. It's for some reason trying to kill Kirk because they're not at war. So with in the, the in previous, uh, so Kirk's always being like a big deal with the Klingons, like they know him by name. But uh, but at this point, when this movie's set, they are at peace. Yeah, like they've the governments are working to bring this planet together. So we cut to this Klingon captain, just a nameless captain. They're really. just, uh, I think he's called Kla. And yeah. they're out, and they're just shooting probes they can find. Probes which scream. <laughs> it did like this. Uh, it sounded like it was out of Star Trek when one, of, when one of the Wookiees went, died. Ah! Yeah. <laughs> Scream, uh, screaming sentient fucking uh, satellites. But as you pointed out, wasn't it? the? I think it was uh, like an oh, Earth one it because it's got like that gold plate on it with the humans on it. Yeah. I don't know how it got that far out into the galaxy, but whatever. Or why they overhear that the diplomat's been taken hostage and that Kirk has been sent, and they're like, "Let's go kill Kirk!" Yeah, so they're just sitting around shooting anything Federation related. Apparently, and even their ship is slightly better than the, uh, better looking than um, the Enterprise, but it's still a shithole. It's just a bird of prey, and even. The- did Wait, the design of the better. Enterprise, the internal thing, made no sense to me because they they're walking through a corridor like mm-hmm. throughout the film, and every like three meters there are pipes on the ground, and it look I don't think that was like they hadn't finished the corridor. I think pipes sticking out at shin height, right, is just part of the design Which of the ship. Funny because that's what one of our main characters then trips over. Oh yeah. Scotty, after saying how much he knows the ship, runs headlong into a tube and knocks himself out. That, that is some of the funny. lame humor in this movie. The lame humor that you don't, was so pathetic. You don't realize his jokes, but I think it was, he was trying for a big comedy angle. Oh, it was meant to be a joke, and that's why it was funny because just because of how badly it fails. Yeah. That and hit them talking about oh beans and whiskey. That's an explosive combination. Oh my god! Shut up, you old man! Shut up! Oh boy. Too old. You could tell Shatner was like, I'm cool. I'm still important. Yeah. Uh so they travel I feel like everyone so the else, Enterprise, everyone else in the cast 
is looking at Shatner like, we are too old for your shit, Shatner. Oh, man, Get with uh, because it. Shatner's directing as well. Yeah. And he, he partly wrote this. That's why this movie... Cyborg tell- was apparently uh, based off the televangelists of the time. I don't know. Okay. Uh, oh, yeah. What about lame humor? So, after they get the what call... That, lame humor? After they get the call to travel to the peace planet... Yeah. Um, they have to round up all the crew who are on leave, and that includes... Uh, who, who's the Russian Chekhov. guy? Chekhov and Sulu, right? And they're on the planet, but they're, they're lost somehow. And they're like, oh, just uh, you can't beam us up. So they're like, oh, uh, we're lost. There's a storm. Whoosh, whoosh, literally into the camera, into the microphone, uh, walkie-talkie thing. Like, was that meant to be a joke? Was that meant to be funny? Because they looked... They, they, look, they look pissed apart off. Apart from Kirk... And Spock and um, Bones, Scotty. right? Scotty too. Maybe. And Scotty. Everyone else looks kind of miserable. The, the main crew, especially S- uh, Sulu and Chekhov, just look like, I just want to get my Except paycheck for, uh, and get out of here. Damn it, what's her name? The chick. Ahura. Ahura. Ahura gets one moment to like really stand out. Ahura is like, Oh, everyone, have a look at my curves. Hope I get my dance scene. You know what's funny, though? Because that's like, one we want to see. 60-year-old Ahura dancing naked with fans. It doesn't sound... Hey. I'm sure someone wants to see I that. I would. But anyway. Oh, man. We didn't talk about the three-breasted uh, cat woman. Yeah, so they go to a bar and there's three-breasted well, the, cat The bar, woman. which is apparently not only the capital of the Peace Planet, but also the main diplomatic headquarters for three of the greatest nations in the galaxy. These three different. This shitty dude. bar. I still can't get. They are so happy with the with space pool, which is just pool but with plan, water. They're talking about how their plans. Oh, fucking hell! But they're talking about how their plans gone perfectly, and they're so happy and chuffed about it. And no, I'm like, no, no, they're all. They I, that was sarcasm. Ugh. That was heavy sarcasm. Ugh, this movie. Because even they realize how much everyone's fucked up. But yeah, in the middle of the bar, there's uh, a three-breasted cat woman just stripping. Yeah. And uh, you know look what? better than cats. Better than the cats from Cats. You know what happened? I reckon the Frangi. 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 The Frangi. They set up this entire planet. They've built all three and nations. They sold for it this. for all three of the nations. You to keep come. you keep trying to They're make this movie make done. sense. <laughs> you all, keep trying to make this movie make sense. It's and all it a doesn't. massive Fra- Frangi plot. <laughs> it's all Frangi why, plot. Why do you want this movie to make sense, Jared? Frangi are fun. Uh, anyway. Because the, the only reason everything would be so disastrous would be Frank I set it up and just sold them shit <sighs> just all. Just built the, the crap out of it. Yeah, well, like, that's wow. it. That's it. It's a big government project that yeah. outsourced it to some company, which has ripped them off. Yeah, Frangi Institute. Yes. Yeah. Uh, Frangi LTD building construction hole diggers. <laughs> so the Enterprise... You like digging holes? Come dig holes! <laughs> the Enterprise heads to the Peace Planet. Uh, they travel down, and for some reason, uh, oh, the ship doesn't work, so they can't just beam them out. They go down. Spock realizes it's his brother. Oh, well, uh, at one uh, uh, at one point, where are the dance. Oh yeah, so they've got to raid the capital, right? Yeah, but to they save need horses. the diplomats. They need horses. But they need horses to ride in, so they're cowboys. Yeah, that is so lame. You, s- I swear, Kirk the whole movie is and... so stupid. I want to be a cowboy. But to then, steal the people's horses it? because they're like convicts or something. Yeah, yeah. So like none of them have seen a woman. There's like one woman that we see on this planet, and, and it's a three three-breasted titties. cat woman. Yeah. Um. So as night falls, they go to this outpost, and all the you see all the space Mad Max people looking up at the hill, going, "What's that? Oh my God! Is she naked?" Yeah, and they start. Go. They they drop everything and just start sprinting up this hill like yeah. their lives depend on it. And up the top, you see this figure with these giant fans dancing, and it's like, oh, is she naked? What's she wear? So you're saying you, you reckon she just had that on a kit? Well, what, how does it? that work, right? Did they bring down like stripper clothes and two giant fans? No, she didn't bring down clothes. She just brought down the two giant fans. Oh, don't worry. This will come in handy Because she day. is actually naked, right? She's, just, she's naked. Yeah. She's, and that's the thing. Kirk's like, so we need you to create a distraction. Oh, I'm taking my clothes off. And Kirk's like... What you know- was the point of the distraction, right? Because the minute they run up the hill, the other guys just point... Uh, point their faces? They just uh, stand up and point their faces at them. And the convicts are like, no, no, oh, yeah, we don't have any weapons like, anyway. I was like, don't worry, I'll do... And like, yeah, we just need you to like, stand up and you, like talk to them. I'm taking my clothes off. No, you can leave all your clothes on. 
I'm naked now. It's okay. It's okay. She's pretty hot, though. But anyway, that's probably what I probably shouldn't have said. Just then anyway, to uh, so they, um, they steal the horses. They ride into the base. There's like a... All the action's pretty lame in this movie. Does she do anything Even else? by Star Trek standards, it's pretty bad. Is that it for her? No, later on she... Uh, oh, yeah, she has a weird thing with Scotty. Yeah, Why? which Is isn't she, in the original series at all. Yeah, well, you know, I don't know. Jed, in the original series, I guess she kind of flirts with a couple of them sarcastically almost. Uh, but I think that just gets blown out into all the movies. Like yeah. uh, like in the, the new movies, she's dating Spock. Even though in the original show, he had more of a thing with the... Uh, Doctor? The nurse, actually. Ethan, they haven't watched Star Trek. We yeah, know they whatever. haven't watched Star Trek. They know Spock. Right. They know Spock and they know her. There's that one scene where she sings to him, so I guess they've got a relationship. Done. Done deal. Whatever. They anyway. be fucking, Ethan. They be fucking. Yeah. And he's yeah. extremely he's an extremely emotional lover. Even though I think they only do it like once every seven years that they're pond far thing. I don't even understand how that works, but whatever. He's an extremely emotional lover. So they go to rescue the diplomats. It fucks up completely because of course the diplomats are like by this point complete slaves to Cyborg because his brain fucked them or whatever. Right. Uh, so they get in the ship and they go back. No, no, but they get beaten. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, the the Enterprise get, crew get taken hostage because they suck. Yeah. Uh, they get in the little shuttle. They go up to the ship. Shit, there's not much more, is there? Oh, there's, no. There's the a weird. Okay, there's a weird part of the movie I just didn't get. Right. So there's this whole thing where it's like once they find out Cyborg is Spock's brother, suddenly Kirk goes, "Oh, I don't know if I can trust you. I don't know if I can trust you." And there's even a point where, uh, rather than just shoot and kill Cyborg, Spock sort of lets him go and they get captured. So, But it, I, at no point did I for a second believe that Spock was, like, against Kirk well, or yeah. not working for the crew. Nah. Like, it, it just didn't make sense that so, Kirk would have this emotion. There's the, just the three of them Because, because the last, like, yeah. two movies, I think, were about finding Spock and then being best friends. And then in this one, it's like, oh, secretly they can't trust each other. Oh, wow. I'm like, okay, whatever. So, basically, it's, of course, only the three of them are kind of being immune to the brain thing. They run around a little bit. Cyborg takes over the rest of the ship except yeah. for Scotty. They get sent into prison. And then we do have... The, they have an escape from, with Scotty. And then we have the best scene in the entire movie. Well, okay, so they get captured again, don't they? I can't remember what yeah, happens no, after they, they escape. escape. They escape with Scotty. Scotty, Scotty runs basically, off they re- basically then Cyborg they realizes, captured. okay, I've captured the rest of the crew. They're all working for me, but I can't really pilot the thing mm. without these three guys. They actually know what because they're the only competent people. Yeah. Uh, most com- the best scene in the movie. Yeah, yeah. Uh, he takes them up and he goes to heal their pain, and it find you find out that Bones' father recently died, which is why he was angry at Kirk and Spock for fucking around in the mountain because it's like you got to take life. Life's yeah, really yeah. important. You got to be yeah. careful. And there's this really touching scene where you see him, like, caring for his dying father. And in the end, he decides to help his father die. Yeah, that was a good scene. And then and then it's like, oh, the crushing pit. Just, like, a month later, they found a cure for it. Yeah. And, oh, it's like, it, it, there's, like, a ten-minute bit, and it's great. But it doesn't save the rest of the movie. It's, it's not enough. It's a really deep it's great. scene. And then, and then it follows on where you see Spock's pain. And Spock's pain is, like, his father holding him as a baby and just going, so human. It's like, oh, damn. <laughs> <laughs> and what, and then, no wonder he's so messed what's up. Kirk? Kirk just doesn't care. He's like, I need pain. You need pain. Yeah, we don't even, we don't, because we can't see Kirk actually being weak. What does so he say? Straight up, he's, he's like, oh, my pain makes me human. Yeah, or something. he says that something like, my pain So straight up, me. he's just too powerful to even do the flashback thing. That's lame. And then Cyborg's like, so, uh, to, so he's like, okay, Kirk, well, you're not going to join me. Spock, what about you? And Spock's just like, uh, no, I'm not going to join you. Of course not. What, did you think that was going to convince me in some way? And he's like, oh, okay. And Bones is like, well, I'm going to stick with these three. Yeah. You know, that was the only good pit in the movie. And I think originally they were meant to turn against Kirk at some point, but they, like, the, main, the, character, the actors were like, no, that's just stupid. Yeah. 
Which is good because it's like the only good bit in the film. Well, and then they decide they'll just continue on. Yeah, because then they go, okay, why do you actually want the ship? And it's like, that's when we get the whole God plot. And, and the movie just like just goes way over the edge. And Kirk's like, okay. And they, he says, let's take him through. Well, it's just, just go. Yeah. They just go straight through. They get straight to well, the Well, the whole time, the Klingon ship is following them. Honestly, it doesn't so, do yeah, it, So, yeah. So, Cybok has been receiving messages from who uh, from a creature he believes is God. Right. That uh, Shakari, which I think is meant to be like heaven or Eden or something. Like, at one point, all the diplomats say the different words oh, they've they got for it. they all say different stuff. So, yeah, it turns out all of God and stuff is, like, based on an actual creature. Because, of course, Star Trek, that show that... It's they've done the god thing better in other episodes. But you know, Star Trek, like <sighs> Like there's a bit where he literally finds the Greek gods. Yeah. And he's like, Okay, you helped us at a certain point develop art and stuff, but it's time for you to like fuck off. Yeah. But they're uh, like advanced aliens. They're yeah, they're like super advanced aliens. That's that's what we got to point oh, out. To I people. don't they yeah, don't yeah. Quite... They're not like actual. Yeah, but they're so advanced you. that they're gods technically when you think about it yeah just well they're, they're sort of very technicality. they're like it's like magic basically yeah exactly but well, that's that whole thing if technology is so advanced from like an alien that yeah, to yeah. us would be magic well with them i think they're more like energy beings sort of thing so they can affect reality yeah but but, but yeah let, it's let, like let's a, get that out of the way though, they're not to make then it, it's not actually god to actually make it make sense for people who have never watched star trek it's like there are beings with like godlike powers yeah and there are beings like the that q you would... continuum and you got yeah. um in tng there's a few they're in t uh no not tng in the original trilogy they actually bump into a few aliens that have like godlike powers and that, that's the point where you're like are they gods it's all that sort of thing yeah 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 so it's not super rare but yeah so they get to this planet and straight away you're like yeah obviously it's trapped Right, because it's just this hellhole in the in the, in the middle of this galaxy, apparently. Right. Uh, God turns up, and it's just a giant white face. And he just wants a spaceship. I do, did you bring the spaceship? And Cyborg, I love that conversation because Cyborg, Cyborg's like, "God, we have come here to meet you to be enlightened." And the and the God creature's like, "That's cool. Did you bring the spaceship? <laughs> did you bring that spaceship? <laughs> and you, is is the spaceship really big? Because I I need a I need a big spaceship." And yeah. it's like. Oh, God, are you going to win lightness? It's like, tell me more about the spaceship. <laughs> There's a guy dip on board with some uh, chips. You, you you really did bring a spaceship. You're not screwing with me, yeah. are you? So, pretty quickly, Kirk's they're like, like, what does a god need with, with a spaceship? spaceship? And they're like, oh, actually, it's the devil. Yeah. Well, it's not. It's just some I think evil. it is literally meant to be the devil because that's when the whole demons were to meant to turn up to no, fight them and stuff it's way cooler as just an alien who's really powerful but the, you know like q continuum but an evil one uh you yeah. know I, I i know that wouldn't they can just take anyway away the powers, anyway, but... anyway cyborg sacrifices himself because does this whole mind meld pain thing show me your pain creature oh, that is so lame and he just jumps into it yeah uh the others run for it Everyone except Kirk gets beamed away because right, only because the beaming works. Kirk, but, oh, that's right. But it's got to be sorry. about Kirk. Because Kirk can only die alone. Oh, that stupid thing. Yeah, right at the start of the film, Kirk goes on about how he was never afraid doing the rock climbing and stuff because deep down he's always known he'll die alone. Like, what does that What does that even mean? Fuck it's never come mean? up before. I, that, okay. I think he's saying that, like, because they're so close friends that, that they'll never let him die. I think it's just a lame line. It's a fucking lame line. So, of uh, course, once Spock gets his only good off. bit in the film, whereas, like, the, the Klingon chips followed them through and is shooting at them, even though they've got the Klingon general. And he's like, Klingon general, you've got to talk to your people and take control of the ship. And the Klingon general's like, I don't know if they're listening. He's like, well, you better fucking talk to them and get them yeah. to listen. Yeah. So, of course, he does. Yeah. And of course, the, the Klingon last ship moment, shoots Klingon the ship. god, and right. then beams Spock, uh, Kirk up. Yep, and they, and they fly off happily ever after. Yep, and he's like, oh. back to the shitty falling apart Federation. I love how we talked about the first quarter of the mo- first. Half. Oh yeah, no, that's right. Because they go back to Yosemite, and then you get another ten minutes of them uh. sitting around eating beans and farting. There's so much. What filler. is happening in this? That's film? the thing I was thinking about. That there's so much. A lot of it's filler. a two-hour film and barely anything happens. 
Yeah. Well, you know, you you learn that Spock has a brother. That he half brother. How many half brother sisters does he? Well, have? Uh, yeah, I was thinking about that. I don't watch. Uh, I haven't watched Discovery, but uh, it would be really cool if Cyborg turned up because then you got Michael Burnham, who is uh, Spock's adopted sister, and Cyborg. Uh, Spock's half brother. They they could like team up because then you got Michael Burnham, who's the human who wants to be a Vulcan or whatever. I haven't watched it, but I think that's what it's meant to be. And then you got Cyborg, who's full on Vulcan, like the son of a Vulcan princess, but is like the most human person ever. Yeah, he's like super in touch with him, his emotions. He's like an anti Vulcan. You know, just like, like that'd be cool. The Vulcans. They just can't have a Vulcan being a Vulcan these days, can they? Oh, there's I, this whole thing where I it's like Kirk they is, got. Uh, they're not Kirk. Ah, uh, there's there's um well, because, because there's they a split cu- off from the wrong in ones, Discovery. So. Apparently, they get uh done dirty, like they get shown to be weird and stuff. Right. And then I don't think they've. Included. Oh wait, did you say Discovery? No, not Discovery. Okay, uh, I was gonna say fuck that then. What's the one between Voyager and Discovery? Enterprise. You know? I, it's the prequel prequel one before the current prequels. Yeah. So it's set just before the Federation's been created. Right. I think it's called Enterprise. I can't remember. I haven't watched that one either. I don't know. There's so much Star Trek. There's like, like sometimes... it, you can be a Star Trek fan and still hate half of all Star Trek. I just feel like sometimes, like there's you that know, much. You know what it's I mean? Good. Like I love it. Can't we have the Vulcans being that race which are meant to be like basically like Well, I was thinking about that, like right? That. Cyborg could work if you thought he was like so. He's there's like this actual one. disease human can, humans can get. It's like a yeah. genetic thing where they, they they're like they love everybody. You know, they're, they're like they they're yeah, mentally yeah. like it's they're really childish, bad. but they they're super in love with everyone. I thought wouldn't it be cool if that was like Cyborg? Like the other Vulcans have to repress their feelings because they've got all these negative emotions, but Cyborg just has no negative emotions. Yeah. He just loves everybody unconditionally. Yeah. So it's like he doesn't need to suppress his emotions. It's like flipped on the head. But his head. at the same time, it's terrible because he's got mind powers that affect everybody. Yeah. Like that's that could cool. like Cyborg could be interesting, but in the movie, he's just an idiot who gets himself killed. Well, so but what I meant though was it's like whenever you get Vulcans and stuff like that, they're never just Vulcans. Yeah, they're gonna be even Spock's like half Vulcan. Yeah, so that's but Spock's done way better. Spock is more interesting than everyone else. Even like uh, his dad's kind of interesting in Next Gen, but I know even Sarek, he's meant yeah. to be. Sarek's he's meant pretty to awesome. be. He's a bit he's, odd, he's he's odd because he's always hooking up with human women. Yeah, and the episodes we see him in is when he's losing control of being. I uh, you gotta watch the original series, stuff, man, because so. he's he's in uh, that a couple times. I gotta watch more. And I think he's in one or two of the movies. So that, that's uh, that's the Star Trek Five. It's pretty crap. I wouldn't watch it. I would not because I found a lot of this to be boring. It's very boring. Oh, that, okay, that's a big thing. I mean, if you've gotten this far in the podcast, yeah. you've probably worked this out. But This if, is not a good movie. It's not a good movie. Uh, if you don't know Star Trek at all and you watch this movie, it's extremely boring. Yeah. The only good parts, uh, I think it, it's pointing mostly just what's wrong with fan it. service and stuff. It's mainly pointing out what is wrong with the film. Yeah. It's not a good film standalone. It's... So, it's not good standalone. I've never seen the Federation depicted like that, where it's just this... It's not the current one where I think they're looking at it a bit darker or the old one where it's this utopia. It's just this uh, failed society that's yeah, collapsing it's just the Federation. almost. It's the Klingons as well. Yeah. And the Romulans. Uh, we, well, we don't really get to see the Romulans except for the hot lady. And it's all because of Franging. Uh, that that that's how you save the film. There's, there's just this giant Ferengi plot where they're screwing everyone over. How funny is there a movie where there's just Ferengi as like the main plot? No, no that, unfortunately, that would not. never come out, would it? That would never come out today. Yeah, because it would have to be like not very complicated. I don't even think. I think they get one episode in, where they turn up again in Enterprise. I don't think I've heard of them since. Ah, oh, but... although that makes sense because they don't turn up till the next generation. Ah, oh, yeah, true, true. They're cool. Still. Oh well. That's yeah. uh that is Star Trek Five. The Not final as frontier. good as um anything else Energy that I've Force, seen. Life Force. The other star uh, sci fi movie we watched, which is really good. Which is fucking amazing. Yeah. Space vampires sounds super lame. Actually watch Life amazing. Force. Don't watch uh don't watch Star Trek. Oh, 5. Holy shit, Life Force. Or is watch good. any of the other Star Trek films. Yeah, I d I don't know, I've never seen them. 
Yeah. Anyway, that is, yeah, that's Star Trek. See you guys later. Thanks for listening to the end of the reel. If you know anyone else who is a fan of good, bad movies, share this podcast around to them. Sharing is the best way to help promote our podcast. Thanks a lot. Bye. Bye Bye-bye.